How you doing today? Uh, this is Richard at Precision Transmissions. Uh, today we're going to be working on a 2000 model uh, Chevy pickup, uh, 532 wheel drive. It come in uh, with a bunch of hard coats uh, that work clear in the dash. Uh, so when we hook our computer to it and we try to clear all the coats, they would turn, uh, come back on right when we turn the key on. So uh, the tranny's burned up, it barely moves. You have to pull it all the way down into low gear to get it to even drive into the shop. But when we got to checking some other things, uh, we noticed that uh, we, we lost our uh, 12 volts going down to the tranny from the ignition switch. So anytime you got a bunch of hard codes like the uh, PWM solenoid, your shift solenoid, uh, your pressure control solenoid and stuff like that, that are hard codes that won't go away, then 90% of the time it's gonna be the ignition switch itself that you physically lost the 12 volts going down to the transmission. So that is something you wanna check right off the bat uh, while you're taking the tranny out to verify that. So uh, the easiest way, just put an ignition switch in it. Uh, if the customer doesn't have the money to put an ignition switch in, switch in it, you can run a key on power wire to where you turn just turn the key on from your fuse box to the power on wire on this tranny and make this tranny work without changing the ignition switch, uh, the electronic part of the switch. So you can get by it if the customer doesn't have the money. We don't like doing it, uh, but we have done it for people. So let's get this apart and see what type of damage it did to it. Like you said, this tranny doesn't move at all. I don't think it's ever been rebuilt. Uh, it's probably just a stock unit. Inverter looks stock. This is a stock work inverter, looks like. Now this is a 4L65. Just a stock unit, stock servo, the five the bands, stuff. Now we won't be upgrading this to a Corvette servo or anything like that. Uh, it's not a race truck or high performance or anything like that. Now we still will put the high energy wide band in it, the Z pack, you know, the 14 clutch starter and stuff like that. So all of that is your standard uh, procedure with us here on this unit, uh, whether it's your grandma's car, your race car, or anything like that. Anytime your vehicle's got a check engine light on now in these new cars, uh, they always come on for your gas cap, they always come on for your O2 sensors and stuff like that. But when they're on for that simple stuff, you don't know when the critical stuff is going on. So that little stuff needs to be fixed too. So if he would have fixed his little stuff, he would have realized that we had problems with the big stuff. Have your lock up O-ring. You got a seal retainer here that holds the seal and stuff in. You always want to put that back. We actually glue the seal in and we glue the retainer back. That way that thing cannot move. We do a lot of overkill stuff to these units just to make sure we do not have any comebacks. So that's the worst thing you can have. All of our uh, jobs, 90% of them are referral. We actually built this shop in back in 96. Uh, I've been in business uh, since 93. Uh, but we actually built this shop here. Uh, and we've uh, been in business ever since. Uh, me and my son do all the tranny building. Uh, we know what goes in and out our door. Uh, we do some really high horsepower units and stuff. If you look at this pan, there's not a lot of film or anything like that. Uh, no shrapnel or anything like that. You got your normal gray stuff. It hasn't been serviced in a long time. Filters completely stopped up. I mean, completely stopped up. 
So we, we do have some issues going on in this tranny from this uh, no power situation. So we'll get this thing a little bit farther apart and see what we can find. It's been really hot and humid here today. So yes, I've got a little has. condensation dripping off my AC <laughs> up top here. If you go outside, my uh, coolant line from my AC unit just looks like a water hose coming out of it. That dang it's so river. humid here today. It is. It's been 100 degrees during the day, rain at night, wake up humid. And this is a very early model. It's, it's before the earliest model, but it still has an early pressure control solenoid. Stuff like that. It's just got the two wire that slides this way. The later model has a plug that slides in from this direction. This is a 60. So. I think he might have said 65 earlier, but he did mean yeah. 60. We do all these all the time, so. I get confused myself sometimes <laughs> we do so many units. Uh. I want everybody to know I'm not a Hollywood movie star. I physically work for a living. None of this stuff is pre hearsed No. Nope. Uh, whatever comes out of my mouth, it is is what it is. Mm -hmm. Everything's live. <laughs> I don't edit anything. There's no redos. Yeah. We got a couple bloopers we haven't showed you. <laughs> yeah, I do need to show those. Now this is the updated pillow switch. This is a little bit later model. They uh, put a cover on here to cover up all the wiring and the, the circuit board in here that was getting contaminated with just your average metal uh, causing these to short out. And this pillow switch here basically tells the computer that the tranny made a second gear shift or it made a third gear shift or a fourth gear shift. That way it physically knows it made the shift. So. Making a lot of material. Yeah. You got your um, PW, I was getting your downshift solenoid here, your passenger solenoid. You got your two shift solenoids, A and B. A. Yeah, this is your forward accumulator. There's a piston and a spring physically in here that controls. When you put it in drive, uh, it compresses a piston in here that softens your engagement, so it just doesn't bang when it goes into gear. Um, I'm trying to look for signs to see if this unit's been rebuilt before. As we tear them apart, we want to look for any type of odd stuff that somebody else is could have done to the unit uh, as we take them apart uh, we see a lot of crazy stuff uh, that people have done that uh, we don't understand so we want to find that stuff and correct it now this is your one two accumulator here this piston and spring assembly uh, softens your second gear shift get this opened up here you can see the springs down in there now we'll put a aluminum piston in here uh, we like the aluminum piston it's got a lot longer shank right here and uh, the piston actually bottoms out in the bore a lot sooner and it uh, shortens the shift on your second gear so the uh, shift kits make an extension that slide over this here to do the same thing but that piston when you just put that new piston in there it's already built into it and plus it gives it more stability on rocking and stuff like that so good update yeah it's a very good update and actually uh even in here when you take this apart uh this could be aluminum or uh, let me take it apart just to show you Yeah, well, I'll take that. Good. So, you can take it apart. Some of them have plastic and some of them have aluminum. If it's got a plastic, replace it. You can find them on the internet or any place like that. You can buy them. But get that out of there because they crack right here and cause big issues. And all of our race car units, they have to be replaced. 
because we bumped the pressure up so high. So something you have to do that way you don't have no issues. Now, if you notice right here, uh, this ball right here has almost beat itself through this case. You stick that ball in there, it's almost falls through. This is still working, but once this ball gets stuck in there and it will not come out, that's when your three, four clutch burns up. Because this ball is your initial hit to apply the clutch. It seals, and then they use this hole here to pressure up. Well, if this ball gets stuck in that plate like that and won't move, it tries to hit the clutch and pressure up at the same time through this one little hole and it can't do it. And that's why your three, four clutch burns out of these trannies. So we'll get this, another plate, but even though we get another plate, we will come in here and drill this hole to make it even bigger, to relieve the pressure off this ball to keep it from beating this plate up. If we leave the hole the same size, it's gonna do it again. So, or you can get, uh, they make a neoprene ball that's in the Chrysler valve bodies. It's a brown ball that's really nice that doesn't do that type of damage to the plates. So, when we do a race car tranny in one of these, we always put the, the other ball in there anyway, but the metal one will work. Now this is your overdrive uh, accumulator, softens your overdrive shift. We actually stack two pistons here, and then we've got a spacer that we put in here to, to stack the piston up where it's just perfectly level like that. Instead of it being like this, it'll have one down and one up like this, but this one will be perfectly level with here. This is your physical lockup solenoid right here that locks the torque converter up. These don't go bad a lot. Uh, you want to clean them up and you can shake them. You hear a little ball in there shaking. Blow air through here, fill it here. You can get a voltmeter and ohm it out and make sure it's good that way or you can test it with a 12 volt battery. But you want to make sure that ball is rattling. If that ball ain't rattling, you have to replace it because your converter clutch might not work. I think this is probably my fourth one of these this week. Uh, we do a lot of these units here. I just got done building a, a fully manual 400 tranny for a customer. A uh, really nice unit. Uh, just got done with it about 15 minutes ago. I wish you had one of our shirts, man. I'd show it on here. Oh, yeah. Now, anytime uh, I've said this many times in my video, this band anchor right here, you want to take a screwdriver and try to knock that out. Just stick it in, take a little hammer, and you can try to get out of it just like that. Yeah. Of course, it jumped out, but just grab it. Get it down to the back. It sets down in the case like this. Well, that damn thing's simply, excuse my hands, uh, like that. But you want to get that out of there. That way you can just grab this drum right here and you can just pull it straight out. If you don't do that, this band right here will hang on this lip and you, you'll beat on it, beat on it, jerk on it, jerk on it, try to get this thing out. So you want to just do that one simple thing. Now this just has a stock band in it. It is a hot energy band because it is a black band but it is just a stock band. Now we'll go back with a brand new high energy band too, but the band's twice the size of it. And you can see the difference in it. This band here only covers three quarters of the drum, where this new one will come in here and it'll physically cover the whole drum. I mean, that's night and day difference. So. Sweet. Some good upgrades. Yeah.
You always want to check from here to here to make sure that's level, get some type of straight edge and make sure that doesn't have a dip in it in the middle. It's got a dip in it, you got to get rid of it because that band will not ply flat on there. It'll have a dip in the band when it tries to ply. The band will wear crooked and do all kinds of funny stuff. So that's one of your main things too on checking that drum. Identifying wear points in a tranny is real critical on figuring out stuff. Uh, on my last video, this bearing right here, uh, we took apart and showed people that it had uh, chips on the inside, stuff like that. So you want to check these bearings. If this bearing is bad, it'll have a noise and park in neutral. So you want to check the, all the bearings going through these trannies. Put new sealing rings and stuff on this input shaft. If you cut any of these, you're going to lose third gear, you're going to lose your forward clutch, or you're going to lose your engine brake clutch. Uh, I had a customer call me where he built his tranny off one of my videos. Uh, he didn't have third gear after he built it, and he cut this ring right here. It's real easy to cut it. Uh, we have tools that size these back, shape them, put them back on and size them back down to where they fit. But when you put your pump back in there, if you nick that, it don't take but just a little bite out of that seal not to have third gear or burn that clutch right out of the tranny. So you can't damage any of these rings. Same way with this rings on this pump right here. If you de these rings here, they're solid. It takes a tool to put them on and a tool to shrink them back down. If you cut this ring right here, you will not have reverse. So these, and these rings here are real easy to cut when you put them in. We have to put our tool on them and let it set about an hour. That of which shrinks that ring down real slowly and gets it down to where it'll physically uh, slide over this bushing right here. This bushing has a big chamfer on it just for that ring where you won't cut it. But when we pray, replace this with a new bushing, our new bushing don't have that good of a chamfer. It has a chamfer, but not this good. So you really have to shrink it down with our tool to get it to go over that seal without cutting it. So the dealer has, the, the factory bushing has a lot more chamfer for the dealer. They put them in probably a lot faster, teaser on them, keep from cutting it. But the aftermarket bushing, uh, you can cut the seal real easy. I haven't seen any signs of this tranny being taken apart or been to or anything like that. Uh, everything looks original. It's still got its load springs in the, in the tranny too, these springs here. Get this. It'll have five of them in here. These still look pretty tall. This one looks a little short, but you want to make sure they're sticking out about that far. If they're, if they're flush, they're no good. You got to replace them. And you got to install them. And you have to install them. So that uh, spring actually right there slows the clutch on from coming on. When you shift it to third gear, that clutch can come on so fast that it doesn't give the uh, second gear band time to come off. So if you leave them out, your second gear band will be on when your third gear clutch comes on. So put that in there for just a safety and it works really well, so don't leave it out. Look here, the tranny forward clutches are old, but you know, everything just looks old, it looks original so far. The damage I see so far, the why it wasn't working, is uh, the three four clutch is burned up and the band uh, is gone. So, that's uh, why it wasn't working and uh, why it wasn't moving is because it just plugged the filter up with all the material off those unit pieces. Now you always want to go back with a new sprag. How you can identify a factory sprag, it'll have a brass uh, cage and retainer around the sprag. Like that. Y'all show you, let me get it off here. These, uh, this backside never wears against this stainless plate here. But the front one always wears against this plate here. You can see the wear, it's got a lip on it where it's wore this out right here. The new Sprague assembly that we put in here, uh, it has basically a steel 
brace and stuff for the Sprague to run in. Uh, the cage assembly is, is 10 times better than a factory one. If you look at this little rinky dink thing compared to this, I mean, there's just night and day difference in the Sprague update that we do to these over the factory. So, the inner race looked good for the Sprague. No uh, chatter marks or anything where the Sprague's been trying to lock. Same way with the, the outer part of the race here. It looks really good. We can clean these up. Scotch brought them really good, worked good. Uh, this piece here will have to be replaced. It's already chewed up too much to, to put back in there against that new uh, uh, sleeve there for that sprag. So. If you notice, this pump is a 13 vein pump right here. It already says it on it, 13 V. What that means is 13 pump paddles. If you count, there's 13 of them in there. If it had anything different, we'd update it to a 13 anyway. But back in the day, that's all they had, and they wanted to let you know when you were building this back that it's a 13 vein pump. So don't put a 10 in it, you, you're gonna have an issue because the, the, the distance between here and here and these paddles don't match and you'll have a pulse, get a pulse in your pump. If you even leave one of these out on a rebuild, you'll see it in a pressure gauge, sitting there jerking like that. So you gotta be really careful. Shot. Now this training has, now the truck probably doesn't have a tow haul button on it. Uh, it's just got the factory uh, thrust washer and the hub here. Uh, when they put the tow haul on there, they went to a, uh, a roller bearing and hub like this one here. Uh, so it hold, hold more load and stuff like that. Cause in overdrive, uh, there's just too much force on this thrust washer right here and it takes it out. So when they added the tow haul, the only thing they did was add this right here and they locked the torque converter up after third gear. So that's the two changes. Great upgrade. Yep. This just stock shell. Uh, don't see it to be stripped or anything like that. We'll replace it anyway with a hardened one just to get it out of there because we know how weak they are. This unit doesn't show any signs of uh, being into, so it's going to be a nice unit for once to uh, not have to uh, go through and look for a lot of mistakes and stuff like that that takes me two hours longer uh, to build one of my units. So. Tour tranny, actually I think my last video, I didn't uh, look for this, I never found it, so I guess it wasn't in the tranny, but this is your anti-clunk spring uh, that keeps uh, your center support from rocking back and forth and uh, making noise when you go from park to drive, or drive to reverse, so either way, this all sets in here kind of like that, kind of like a, against that, keep this from doing this when you're shifting your shifter. Your low reverse clutch. Looks tired. Looks tired. This just has stock four pinion planets. Nothing uh, special. Like your GTOs and your Cadillac Escalade, they'll have five. Wanna check all these for any type of rock. The only one I feel, see that one right there? You can barely oh, yeah, see, it, see it, it rocking. Flip another one. Yeah, this rocking. one here. 
dead to bury. Yeah, yeah. This one over here, nothing. Nothing, yeah. This one here, I don't think rocks. See, nothing. So this one right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, that's wore out. Dude, we'll have to replace this planet. So you want to look at all that type of stuff. Good catch. Go back to your forward planet. Look at all that stuff. Check for wobble. Any pitting on the teeth or anything like that. Where with the bushing runs right here. That bushing right there. Runs right here. Check for any wear here. So, that's what that tranny uh, doesn't look too bad. Uh, it's going to be nice to uh, put something together that's not been torn apart by five different people and have to worry about trying to hunt down any, all kinds of issues. So we'll get this thing cleaned up, put back together with all of our nice parts, uh, get it back in the vehicle. Hey, subscribe to our YouTube channel, dude. Come by and see us at Precision Transmissions. Have a good day.